Hi, my name's John Wieslander, Wieslander Racing for a Cure. We're an organization dedicated to raising awareness and funding for prostate cancer research. Wieslander Racing for a Cure is a charity dedicated to raising awareness and research funding for prostate cancer. Our goal is to address men's well care uh, through our customers, the general public, and those that we encounter every day in our lives. Our goal is to raise as much money as we possibly can by participating in local car shows, racing events sanctioned by the Sports Car Club of America, and local charity events hosted by the Chamber of Commerce, the Kent Island Cruisers, our local car club. This year, we held a raffle for a beautiful Paul Reed Smith guitar, and that raised over $2,500 for the cause. Without this money coming in, in any amount, the research can't move forward. I can raise awareness and try and get folks to get to the doctor. But once you get to the doctor, we don't want it to be the same traditional medicine we know today. Immunotherapy is the wave of the future. As a young man, I grew up like many in an era when we didn't understand the damage that things we do to our body can do and how it can promote certain diseases and health issues. For me, it was simply smoking cigarettes. I smoked cigarettes for more than 30 years and I decided to quit and I did quit successfully. When I turned 50, my doctor was pleased to hear that I had quit smoking, but advised me that I needed to participate in a men's well care program. He was talking about prostate cancer, skin cancers, and other things like diabetes, high blood pressure, and high cholesterol. And eventually my PSI, PSA spiked, and when it did, I wanted to go to the best hospital in the area for my treatments and evaluation. So I ended up at Hopkins. A very specialized MRI was ordered. There, instead of prostate cancer, remarkably found a small carcinoma about the size of my fingernail uh, in my bladder. And in the elevator with me was Dr. Ashley Ross. I went on the Hopkins website and looked and looked until I found a picture of him and then made an appointment with him. On my very first visit, Dr. Ross made me feel comfortable, at ease, explained the procedure, and at the end of that visit, I was entirely comfortable that I had made the right decision. I'm at Johns Hopkins and I run the prostate cancer program in the urology department there. And we're really interested in evaluating new technologies, both diagnostically for prostate cancer and also new therapeutics. Uh, when I first came to know John, he was interested in how he could take his patient experience and transform that into one where he gets involved in the research programs and, and further research in many areas, particularly areas that might be underfunded but could have potential high rewards. And he really focused in on some of our immunotherapy efforts. And this is a lot of the, um, a lot of the interest in medical science in the last few years have been about training your immune system to attack cancers that are in your body, so they would specifically find your particular cancer cells. In prostate cancer, it hasn't been as responsive to immunotherapy as some other malignancies, like melanoma, um, renal cell carcinoma, lung cancers. And so we've been looking at ways to tweak the prostate cancer to either expose itself to the immune system more, or to use and capitalize on some of the properties of the immune system to attack the prostate cancer. And we've been particularly interested in doing pilot studies, which means small clinical trials in men with metastatic disease that really don't have options for a cure, and see if we could take methodologies and combine them and then really affect a large change in the disease course. John was interested in a program we were doing in which we would give a immune stimulant, uh, it's called anti-PD-1, that would sort of make your T cells more active against your cancer and expose the cancer antigens, which are the markers on the cancer cells that differentiate them from your normal cells, by doing something called cryotherapy. 
and he was interested in helping fund the project to uh, allow there was 12 men in this study undergo the trial but more more than that uh, to look at what were the scientific correlates that could tell us who was responding, who wasn't responding, and how we could capitalize on that in the future. And whenever you do these uh, sort of shoot the moon type studies, um, you'll have 12 patients or 15 patients, and maybe only a few will respond. And actually, the importance of the research is to figure out what made those patients different. Was it their cancers? Was it the patient themselves? And then you can always add to that research so that instead of having two or three people respond, you can get 80%, 90% response rates. And with these pilot projects, they're usually underfunded. They're usually big ideas that could make great advances, but a lot of them you know, will, fall, will fall short. And that's where philanthropy really plays a key role. Even when you get to the finish line on these projects, understanding the science behind it and how it will affect other men really goes under, underfunded and gets shortchanged. And so that's one area that John thought he could make a big contribution and we're happy that he got interested in that and he's supporting it. And actually, since the time we first met, we've opened at least two more trials looking at immunotherapy in, in prostate cancer, and we're continuing on with that effort. I had my surgery. It went off without a hitch. And as of last July, I am two years cancer-free. Prior to my surgery, Dr. Ross had a very successful first surgery and had about an hour to kill. And he came and sat with me. And we talked about all kinds of things. And I was very impressed with his demeanor, uh, the things that he was doing. Um, because Hopkins isn't just a surgery hospital, it's a teaching and research hospital. And of course, when you're afflicted or have the potential for any of these diseases, you tend to take great interest in it. And I did. And he explained to me that the funding comes in in dribs and drabs from grateful patients, 20, 50, 100, sometimes more. And it was at that point that I figured I had the perfect opportunity with my business to raise a little money, pay it forward, and maybe help pave a brighter future for men, my children, my grandchildren. Uh, and that's why I'm here doing this. Dr. Ross, it's with great pleasure that Ken Island Marine and Wieslander Racing for a Cure present you with this check to further your research for prostate cancer while we raise awareness. Thank you, Thank very, you much. very much for everything that you're doing for men of all ages. Thank you. Lisa? Thank you very much for allowing us to be part of the Brady Urological Institute's family. It's a pleasure to have you join us as Thank a you. partner. Thank you. Thank you very much. This year, we had a raffle for this beautiful Paul Reed Smith Mira S2 built right here on Kent Island in Stevensville, Maryland. And the lucky winner here is with us today, Chris Cantor of Denton, Maryland. Chris, it is with great pleasure I present this Mira S2 and I hope you enjoy it. Thank you for participating in our raffle. I appreciate it, John. Thanks a lot, Todd. Thanks for everything you guys are doing. You know, I came up here in the summer and, and I had you know, a few items that I need John and Todd to help me with. And I came in and I heard John's story and it was the least I could do was purchase a couple of raffle tickets for the cause. So for John and Todd, I, I, I hope you guys are very successful in your mission. And uh, this was an awesome, awesome cause. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you again. God, thank you. And doctor? Pleasure. Congratulations. Thank you. Very thank much. you. My father's John Wieslander. Um, as a young child, I wanted to get a go kart to play in the yard with. And um, my dad said, no way. You know, we don't have a yard to ride it in or anywhere to take it to. So. I saved up my money and uh, bought a racing go-kart and we got involved in racing go-karts. Um, we both fell in love with the sport and um, grew from there, you know, got out of go-karting and into a full-size Mustang race car and um, grew up, had a family, got in the way of racing and uh, recently we're able to purchase this car and get back into racing. I'm a mechanic on 
for Kent Island Marine Service, um, work on boats, and have had a love for racing since I was a young child. My father was into racing. Racing and having this car really helps raise awareness for our charity by, it's basically a big rolling billboard. So at the track or here at our shop, as we have customers come in and out, it helps raise awareness for our charity. This year was the first year for this car and um, it was basically a shakedown year, get the car figured out, went to a few practices and then had our one race event weekend, was fortunate enough to win my class both days. It's a pretty good start. Yes sir. Right. I love racing, wouldn't trade it for the world.